In today's video, I'm practicing my lighting techniques by taking some at-home studio fitness portraits. So what the hell do I really think I'm doing in my studio wearing my, well, my workout t-shirt? It's jeans on the bottom, t-shirt on the top still. Well, two reasons, really. First of all, I need a photo of me working out. No, not just purely for vanity, not so I can put on Instagram and pretend that I take care of myself, but because I'm doing a series of features on CNET around at-home workouts and fitness and Apple Fitness and all of that stuff, and I need a good photo to really illustrate it, to show me actually doing what I say I'm doing. But the second reason why this is important and why I'm actually making a video about it is because doing any kind of project like this, when you experiment with light, you try different ways of lighting things, whatever the subject is, whether it's a portrait, whether it's a product, whether it's a macro scene, like I've shown before in many of my recent videos, the more you learn, the more you do these things, the more techniques you've got in your bag. Today I'm talking about lighting for portrait, yet the same principles in lighting about where you put that light to create different shadows, to create certain moods, how you might bounce the light, or how you might use a second light, that applies just as much here for this portrait as it does when I'm taking macro photos. So even though this might not seem like a video which is related at all to macro, the techniques that I'm putting to use here are basically the same ones that I use whenever I'm using lighting. So all I wish to say really is if you've never tried doing lit self-portraits at home, give it a go, see how you get on and see if you can develop and refine your lighting skills as a result. So let's get involved and I'm gonna move back a little bit because what I've got above me, as you can probably maybe see, you can see the shadow just up here. We've got my soft box. It's only about that wide. And um, I've got it overhead because I know that what I want to get is this dramatic top light coming down. I want it to fall more over the tops of my arms, the tops of my head, than I want anywhere else. I want this nice fall off of light. The reason is, is because that is going to give a much more dramatic look. It's going to give not so much a sporty look, but it's going to look more powerful, a bit more epic. And that is exactly the technique that I want to use. That's the look I want to get for this photo because it's going to be the main image illustrating a series of articles. I want it to be eye-catching. I want the readers to see it and think, I'm going to get something good out of this story. I'm going to read on. The other reason is more about vanity and about trying to show off what I've got. I am sort of at the beginning of my fitness journey, so I do not have huge bulging muscles, but I do have a slight bit of definition. So by using that lighting in a certain way, you can cast shadows on that definition. You are not pretending to have muscles you don't have, it is emphasizing what's there, and that's gonna be super important here. But shooting self-portraits are never easy, so I'm gonna take you through the setup that I've got here. First of all, my camera, my 5D4, and I've got my 24 to 70 lens on here. Now for this portrait, I'm a little under 50 mil, and that's gonna give a nice flattering angle. As you can see on top, I've also got my wireless trigger, which is triggering the light. My Godox AD600 Pro, which I have got on a big boom arm, sandbagged of course, to make sure that it doesn't fall down. But despite the fact that this light is up as high as I can pretty much get it in here, I'm 6'2", and so standing up, it gives me basically no headroom under it. So actually, I'm going to be taking all of my shots kneeling down. So that's why I brought this light down. That's why the camera is not particularly high on its tripod. I only need head and shoulders for this image, so full length isn't really a concern. That's also why I've been able to get away with just wearing my workout t-shirt and yet still be in jeans. But there is one more light that I'm using here, and it's just down here, this Godox AD200, a smaller, less powerful light. And I've got a grid on the front of that. And that is angled below and firing up at my face. The reason being is that just having this one light coming in down from the top is gonna to make light fall down across my face. But of course, under my eyes, in my eye sockets, it's gonna get really, really dark. It's gonna fall into a deep shadow. And there are two ways that you can fix this. One is to use like a white bounce card, just a, a, a white reflector. It could be a piece of paper. It could be an actual um, reflector that you can buy. 
and you can hold that in place and bounce the light from here back up into my eye. Great technique, the problem is, is that trying to figure out that angle for a self-portrait is very, very difficult. So I've got a slightly easier route, I think, in simply adding a second light, much, much lower power, and that's just gonna fire up at my face, slightly soften those shadows. It's not hitting me with more light. This very much overhead is the key light. This is what's sculpting those shadows, giving the mood. All this is doing is just adding a little bit of extra light to fill in those shadows under my eyes. I've done a couple of tests before and after with the second light and the difference really does make a huge difference. And again, it's something that I've only learned how to do by experimenting with lighting more. And it's something that I've really found is helpful when I've done macro shots. Because if you imagine lighting a mushroom from the top and you're firing this light down, all of those frills, all of those gills underneath it will fall into shadow. So how do you do that? Again, you bounce that light back up or you add in a second light. The same principle here and it works. So I suppose I am the mushroom in that scenario, aren't I? Okay, so let's get shooting. I've got my position basically marked out on the floor. It's right in front of the camera and I've got one crucial extra little tool, a phone. Now I'm using the wireless settings on my camera to allow me to control my camera with this phone, which is really the only way I'm gonna be able to actually take these kinds of portraits without having to dash back and forth. It also means I get to kind of look at the composition, see where I am in the frame. Settings wise, I use exactly the same systems I think about for whatever lighting I'm doing. I start with ISO 100, that's the base ISO, and I choose the aperture just based on the look I wanna get. In this case, I wanna be absolutely pin sharp, so I'm working at about F8. The shutter speed is pretty much irrelevant. I'm usually about 200th of a second. Now, what I always start off with, whether I'm lighting myself, whether I'm lighting a product, whether I'm lighting a mushroom when I'm out and about, I always wanna start with a completely black frame before I turn my light on. Reason is, is that usually I wanna craft that light. I wanna know that when I turn that light on and I take my photo, that I have got complete control over where that light goes. So I know that if I have got my settings, if I'm at F8 uh, and a fast enough shutter speed, that I am completely canceling out the ambient light. It means that even with this bright video light, with those settings, I will still get a pretty much completely black frame. That way, when I turn on my light, I know that I can control all of the light in there and it isn't being affected by the other lights in the room or by any ambient light from outside. So let's just take a quick shot. Auto focus on my face. And there's my image. And as I suspected, it is a completely black frame. Perfect. Now I can go and turn on my lights one by one and we'll see the results. Okay, so we're gonna start with this overhead light. I've turned this on. Let's give this a quick go. Now that's turned on, tap to focus on my face. And we take the shot. I mean, it's not a great photo, but we can see what it is, there I am. And you can see exactly what I mean about those eye sockets. My face is generally lit okay, it's bright enough, it looks fine. But my eyes are basically completely dark circles. So we have to bring in the second light just to light those up a little bit more. So I'm gonna do that now. And now we turn that light on and hopefully we should be good to go. So another reason it's always good to work light by light. If you turn all of your lights on at once, you don't know how each one is affecting your image. So start with one light, your main light, and then add in second ones as and when you need them. Okay, let's go back, take another test shot. And that's already looking a lot better. Those shadows under my eyes have already been softened quite a bit. I actually think I could probably turn the brightness of this second light up just to give a little bit more on my face. So I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna take another test shot. And this is the other thing with working with lighting. It's such a trial and error process. You dial in some settings, take a shot, see how it looks, and then adjust accordingly. And that's the great thing about doing little experiments like this. Even if you don't need to publish an image, you can just practice with your lighting because Every single time you do it, you learn a little bit more. You learn how to analyze your image and think, hmm, no, that isn't what I wanted to achieve, but I'm gonna tweak this setting, tweak this position a little bit, 
and you learn much better how to get the actual look that you want. Lighting can be a pretty tricky process and it can seem really, really daunting. So just on your own time, playing around like this is a great way of refining those skills. Okay, let's take another shot. Focus. And that's definitely looking a lot better. But I think actually we may have gone now a little bit too bright on that second light. So I'm gonna knock it down just a little bit, just go halfway between where it was before and where it is now. I think that is a much nicer balance. We've gone from the very, very dark eyes, almost completely black eye sockets where you can't see any detail in there at all. We've turned that light right up blasted me with a little bit too much light so it looks a little bit unnatural. Now I think we found a much more uh, subtle approach that just lifts those shadows but it doesn't look overdone. So I'm pretty happy with how this looks actually. So next step is actually to start testing the shots that I'm getting. Using the weights, I want to be holding these up. They're fairly big boys but you know, ah! <laughs> that genuinely hurt. Oh, and this is why I need to work out more. That's kind of the point of these articles is about me trying to get back into exercise, trying to be fitter and healthier. And, um, and here I am straining a shoulder, just lifting one dumbbell for a photo. All right, we're gonna start off in the same way, but what I'm gonna do this time is actually use the 10 second timer. So I'm gonna trigger the timer from my phone here and then that'll give me time to put the phone down and pick up the dumbbells and get into position and then the photo will take. So let's do that now. Okay, just taking hair back, pick up the weights. Okay, so here's the first shot. You know what, actually for a first one, I don't think it's too bad at all. We've got that lighting in there lovely cascade coming down from below. It's falling a little bit on the background, just enough so that it doesn't completely fall to black, which is important because I'm wearing a black t-shirt, but I still want it to have that very dark, moody, dramatic feel. I think that light coming in from below is looking really good. Yeah, you know what? I think settings wise, we're okay. One thing I do want to do though, little trick, is I want to emphasize my arms a little, a little more. It's again, it's a fitness article. We want to kind of inspire people to look at these articles and think, I want to read about this guy's experience with, uh, with health and fitness. So one little thing is that when I had my arm up and I'm trying to kind of show off what little amount of muscle I have, just bringing that sleeve up exposes the muscle. The great thing as well about that is that my muscle line such as it is, goes across here. And the way we're lighting from above means that it casts a natural shadow. And it's that shadow that really carves out and defines muscles. So by lighting in this way, I'm not pretending I have muscles, I don't, but it is emphasizing what is there. That's kind of the point. So I pull my sleeves up a little bit, expose my arms, and allow that light to cascade over my arm. And on both sides, when I'm holding those weights and I'm straining a bit more, should get a decent shot. I suppose if I did a few reps as well, that might pump up the muscles a little bit, get a bit of blood flowing, hopefully make them appear a little bit bigger than they actually are. This is the first time I've ever actually done any kind of workout on a video and I don't expect it's gonna happen again. So enjoy it, I suppose. Please don't unsubscribe. I'm sorry for this, but it does help for the photo. Right, okay. It's not gonna make any difference, but there we go. Uh, okay, again, same thing. Tap to focus on my face. Try and just sort my hair a little bit. Okay, self timer's on. Sleeves. Up, grab the weights. Sleeves up a bit too much. Bit too much. But everything else is looking pretty good. I can already see the difference in the shadow on my arms. It's carving out that definition. It's definitely 
um, a more flattering lighting style if you're trying to emphasize things like that. So I think what I'm gonna do now is just play around, take a few more shots, try and have a face which doesn't look like it's straining too much to hold weights up. Hopefully we can get something decent. Well, I'm never gonna be overjoyed with photos of me. That's why I usually pretend to be behind the camera, but I think I've got at least one or two that might be doable. But it does bring me to an end of today's video. Um, I know it's been a bit of a different one, a little bit out of the ordinary for this channel, but um, I hope that maybe if you've been interested in getting into lighting, you at least kind of like to see how I would apply those same lighting techniques to a different subject. Maybe it's something you can give a try yourself if you've got some spare time at home on a weekend um, and see whether it's a good learning experience for you as well. If not, maybe you just enjoyed seeing how I take some other photos. Um, but if you have enjoyed this video, do please hit that like button. Do consider subscribing. show your synced photos. Thanks, Siri. But if you have enjoyed, where did I get to? If you have enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, do the usual. I will see you next time.